Hi, my name is Alexis Goldstein, and this is an experiment. I wanted to do a series of short podcasts breaking down concepts from Wall Street aimed at a general audience. I'm trying to do this to make complex products uh, more approachable because I think all of them can be explained if you just dedicate a little bit of time to learning about them. And today I'm going to be talking about mortgage-backed securities, also known as MBSs. So before I talk about what a mortgage-backed security is, I want to talk about how mortgages typically work in the traditional model. So you want to buy a house, you borrow some money from the bank in the form of a mortgage home loan, and then every month you pay them some uh, amount of the principal back and you also pay them some amount of interest uh, to compensate them for giving you the loan. And in the traditional model, the bank keeps the mortgage on their books, and so they are pretty picky about who they give mortgages to because they don't want to be at risk of somebody defaulting on their mortgage. And so that's what we call the traditional model. Now, a bank might have a whole bunch of people that have mortgages with them, and so there might be a whole bunch of homeowners that are paying into the bank on a monthly basis, paying their principal and paying their interest, and the, but the bank still would hold all of the mortgages inside the bank on their books. Um, so what happened is people basically figured out a different way of doing this. And before I talk about the different way, I need to talk about this general concept called securitization. And what securitization is, is when you take something that isn't tradable, like a mortgage, and you turn it into something that is tradable. Something, and when I say tradable, I mean something that can be bought and sold through financial participants, through an investment bank like Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley. So what happens when mortgages are securitized? Well, first of all, the first thing that happens is the bank no longer holds their mortgage on their books. They take those mortgages, whether they be hundreds of mortgages or thousands of mortgages, and they put them in a metaphorical box. And then instead of the monthly principal payments and the monthly interest payments going to the bank, these payments go to the bank, but then they sort of flow into this box. And this box is what we call a mortgage-backed security, or an MBS for short. So you can think of an MBS as a box of hundreds of mortgages or thousands of mortgages where the interest payments and the principal payments flow into that box. But that's not quite the end of the story, uh, because what happens is that money passes through the mortgage-backed security and on to investors. And this is why I mentioned securitization. Because now that it's in this box, this box is now a tradable thing. Investors can buy a piece of that box so that rather than the bank getting the monthly payments, the investor gets the monthly payments. And it's usually not just one investor that buys the whole thing, but there will be multiple investors that all have a piece of this mortgage-backed security. Um, and what I skipped on the previous slide was this uh, picture of the investment bank which is often somebody that helps assemble this mortgage-backed security in the first place. They might help to structure it and put it together and to actually securitize the mortgages in the first place. Um, and so in this model, there is uh, it's a little bit different than a CDO because in a CDO, different investors might get a different interest rate. In the mortgage-backed security model, all of the interest payments pass through onto the investors and so every investor would get the same percent, the same rate of return on their investment. So that's a mortgage-backed security. It's 100 mortgages, 1,000 mortgages, you put it in a box, you move it out of the bank and into this structure and then investors buy pieces of the structure and then unbeknownst to the homeowner, their principal payments are no longer going to the bank although they may pass through the bank they're going to the investors who bought this mortgage-backed security. Now, before I wrap this up, I just want to talk about why this happened, right? Why did we move from this model where banks were holding these mortgages on their books to a model where banks were offloading them into these boxes, into these mortgage-backed securities that could then be bought and sold? So the first thing I want to talk about is the risk of default, which might you might think that's the main reason why we moved off of this model. So if a person defaults on their mortgage, they no longer pay the interest and the monthly payments because they say they can't make the payments, the bank is stuck with this mortgage on this house that is no longer sort of paying their principal. So what the bank typically will do is they will foreclose on the house and they will try to sell it to recoup their investment. So that's one thing that can happen. But the other thing that could happen is interest rates 
could drop. And if interest rates drop, a lot of people will refinance. And when you refinance, you are essentially uh, getting uh, a new mortgage from a new bank. And so the new bank pays off your old mortgage with your old bank. And so the bank basically gets a whole bunch of money um, and, and loses the mortgage because it's been paid off. And the problem with this is they're getting a bunch of money at a time when interest rates are low. And the reason that that is not ideal for the bank is when you're sitting on a bunch of cash and interest rates are low, there isn't a really clear place to invest your money. Because if you invested in treasuries or you invested in whatever, you're going to get a very low rate of return. This is the concept of yield, is how much money am I making by investing my cash somewhere? Is I'm gonna, am I going to get a high yield or a low yield? And when interest rates are low, yield will be low. So really the thing that people were concerned about is prepayment the risk of prepayment, and the risk of getting your money back sooner than you wanted to get it back. So what securitization was meant to solve was two things. First, it was meant to get rid of this risk of the banks holding these mortgages on their books. They no longer had to worry about people defaulting, so they could, in theory, give out mortgages to whoever they wanted, whether or not they were credit worthy, um, and they would just pass that on into this mortgage-backed security that somebody else would buy and somebody else would worry about. The other reason that this was popular was the thought of bundling these mortgages together into a pool, into a big security where there are hundreds of mortgages or thousands of mortgages in a box, is you reduce the risk of prepayment. Because even though one person might prepay their mortgage, chances are hundreds of people or thousands of people who are all together in this pool of mortgages are not going to all prepay at the same time. And so you reduce the, the sort of risk that there would be lots of prepayments and you would get back your money at a time when interest rates were low. What people didn't really consider, and part of the reason the financial crisis was so severe, is no one really thought that Americans would default in mass on their mortgages, right? The idea was, first of all, it's very rare that people default, or at least that was the thinking. Number two, if they were to default, chances are all of America wouldn't default at once. Um, and number three, even if that were to happen, the house still has some intrinsic value. So if you foreclose on the home, you resell it in the market, you recoup some of your investments. So the idea was this was very safe. Of course, what people weren't banking on was this fact that there was this bubble and that home prices were inflated and people were taking out mortgages at the peak. And of course, there was all of this predatory lending going on. And so people were being tricked with these bait and switch rates and these liar's loans. Um, so all of this factored in to a big bubble where home prices went like this, and the value of the mortgage-backed securities, which were presumed to be safe, uh, were not worth what everybody thought that they were worth. So just to rewind, mortgage-backed security, hundreds of mortgages or thousands of mortgages, you put it in a box, the interest rates pass through the mortgage-backed security and on to investors. And that is what uh, mortgage-backed security is all about. So thanks for watching. I mentioned briefly something called a CDO in this presentation. So the next podcast I will do will explain what a CDO is. It stands for Collateralized Debt Obligation. And the building block that you need to know about before you can understand CDOs are, you guessed it, MBSs. Really quickly before I sign off, I just want to put in a pitch for those of you in New York City. You really should bookmark nycga.net. It stands for New York City General Assembly. I am really active with the Occupy movement and really suggest that any of you who have yet to dip your toe in the waters to give it a shot. There are orientations every Saturday at 2 p.m. at Union Square. There are lots of ways to get involved. Every Friday at 2 p.m. we go down to the New York Stock Exchange and at 4 p.m. at the closing bell we counter it with the People's Gong. I won't ruin for you what that is, so if you want to learn more, be there or be square. Until next time, I'm Lexis Goldstein, and this has been Behind the Wall.